Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, a game that is currently in development by Game Labs, the developers of Ultimate General uh, Civil War and Gettysburg. Uh, Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts allows you to design warships and fight them in battles. Uh, it is currently in an alpha state, so the game is in uh, relatively early development. Um, but it is to the point where you can play through the Naval Academy, which is some different uh, challenges of uh, different scenarios that you have to overcome, as well as a little bit of a tutorial type of a thing uh, while the campaign is being worked on. Um, in today's video, we're going to return, obviously, to the Naval Academy then, and we're going to go ahead and fight uh, the Gun Basics number 2. Um, some of these scenarios are pretty easy, right? Like we played the target practice the other day and we played the gun basics one and those are basically just beating up on defenseless enemies. But this one is, has an interesting little quirk to it. And the reason is what I'm going to do. So gun basics number two is basically destroying an enemy battleship that shoots back. So unlike target practice where the enemy ship just sits there and takes it, in this scenario the enemy will shoot back. Now, all things being said, it could be pretty easy if we just focused on building uh, one battleship and went toe-to-toe -to -toe with an, an, an enemy battleship. But I think what I actually want to do in today's video uh, or stream is I want to go ahead and I want to design a cruiser. And the game does give us that option. So Gun Basics number 2 allows you to fight an enemy battleship and destroy it with either one battleship or a couple of armored cruisers. And so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, we're going to kind of take the underdog route of a l more lightly armed ship against a more heavily armed ship, and we'll see how things play out. So we're going to do uh, this scenario. We'll have $7.6 million. The enemy fleet consists of one battleship, and then we can either build a battleship or a heavy cruiser. As I said, we're going to go with the heavy cruiser. Now... With this being said, uh, we have three tech bonuses that we can choose in this battle. We can optimize secondary guns, optimize main guns, or have balanced gun techs. Um, since I would rather just get more money, uh, but I, if, if we're going to be building an armored cruiser, and if we're going to be potentially building two of them, and we're going to be going up against a more heavily armed opponent, I think I'm actually going to go with optimized main guns. I think that would be the sound thing to do. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and jump in here, and then we're going to see here's the hull of our ship. This is actually, it looks like we're the British this time. Uh, we got the, uh, Royal, the Royal Navy ensign here on the edge of our ship. Um, but uh, instead of designing a battleship, actually, uh, there's interest. There's two battleship hulls you can go with. This looks more of like a French design, um, and this is obviously a British hulled design. But we're going to go with an armored cruiser hull. Uh, this one also looks very much like a uh, French design with their sort of tum is it tumble horn with like this weird rounded edge uh, that that seemed to be very prominent in French designs. But in any event, we're going to go with an armored cruiser hull, um, and that's what we're going to design here. Uh, you can see we have $7.6 million, uh, and we'll have to figure out what we want uh, to design the ship as. Now, normally in Armored Cruiser, you'd probably want a maximum range. In this case, we're going to go with very short ranged uh, because, well, we're just fighting a battle. So we'll probably get a little bit more bang for our buck if we go with a short range ship, um, even though if we really were building a good Armored Cruiser, we probably wouldn't want short range. I'm also going to go, if I can, with a faster ship, uh, I would like a 20-knot ship if I can, and I'd also like 7,500 tons or so. Um, we can see how many of these we can build. We'll probably only be able to build two, so we may make it a little bit bigger as well. But I would at least like to start out with 7,500 tons, which is probably about 3,000 tons less than what the enemy battleship will consist of, and a 20-knot speed, so we can have a speed advantage. If we're going to be outnumbering him in the number of ships we have, but we're going to be outgunned, I think speed will be important so we can outmaneuver him. Um, unfortunately, this armored cruiser hull can only fit two-inch casemates. Yep, I've built this design one other time, and that was a limitation, which kind of sucked. I mean, casemates on armored cruisers definitely could come with more than two-inch uh, guns in there. But in this case, that's going to be a big limitation because two-inch guns would be real good at destroying enemy destroyers, but if all we can fit in there is two-inch guns versus an enemy battleship... Those those guns are largely worthless. They don't even do a good job of starting fires, unfortunately. Um, in terms of the technology that we can go with, in terms of our propulsion, we really have no options. We've got the basic steam engine. We don't even have triple expansion engines. We've got basic coal propulsion and natural boil boilers. No induced or forced or anything like that. 
In terms of the armor on the ship, we're going to go with compound armor. Um, the I think this is this is a, a cool example of where you can see where the real benefit of the more advanced armors are. You've got all these different armors. Obviously, we haven't researched any of these, but we can either go with iron plate, just a standard old heavy iron plate, or we can go with compound. The compound armor is stronger, but it's also lighter. So um, you don't you see here that iron plate has a plus 65 hull weight. When we actually click compound, watch up here. We've got the weight currently at 7,300 tons. When we change it over to compound armor, we lose 1,400 tons, just like that. The armor is better as well. Um, so that's that's kind of neat. Um, we only have an option of a single turret or a single hull bottom. Um, I guess we we'll go with the barbet one. Barbets are sufficiently armored only against light guns. I don't actually know if that matters because I don't think we're going to be putting our guns on barbets or anything like that. In terms of bulkheads, we only have the standard. In terms of citadel, we do need a citadel, I think, uh, to prevent like detonations or just limit the destruction that the enemy uh, visits on us. Uh, shells, we're going to go with heavy. We're going to go with increased numbers of shells. Um, torpedoes I'm not going to touch Black powder is Really? All we get is black powder? Ugh, just standard black powder guns, huh? Crap uh, Hydraulic turrets Maybe I should actually put the stuff on the ship Before I before I fiddle with that So let's go with the main tower I'm going to go with the front tower here uh, We're going to go with the, the level 3 rear tower as well um, I think having good towers is important um, in terms of funnels, this is something I hadn't talked about in previous videos, but if we scroll down, uh, where are we going to go? If we scroll, well, ah, if we scroll all the way down here on the right column here, where you've got your stats, um, you actually have an engine efficiency, which if you have inefficient engines, uh, you get penalties, which means you have slower acceleration and you won't actually be able to get to design speed. So I can set this to 20 knots all I want. If I don't have funnels for exhaust, I'm never going to get there. Um, so what we're actually going to do here is we're going to go ahead and put a double funnel um, here in the front. And just like that, it immediately gets us to 72% engine efficiency. Um, funnel capacity is level uh, 11. Um, we could go with uh, apparently, oh, actually engine efficiency is only 30, 36 right now. So we'd have to do two double funnels to get it up to 72. We need three double funnels uh, just to get it up to 100. That seems a little bit much. I don't know of any ships with six funnels but that's what it takes apparently to get us to full engine efficiency um barbets aren't a thing because we only have two main guns we're going to go with centerline guns we're going to go with 11 inch guns and we're going to go with double barrels so we're going to have oh they can't even fit well, they can fit on the rear of the ship i can't fit the 11 inch guns on the front of the ship really i guess i need to make the ship a little bit bigger So if we do 8,000 tons, then they can probably fit, right? No? They still can't fit on the front. The turret's too big. How is that even possible? Why is the turret so damn big? There's room on the back of the ship. Sorry, Tortuga. I didn't know. Uh, I didn't want to advertise on your channel that I was going to be streaming. It's all good. Why can't I fit an 11-inch gun on the front of this thing? Uh, all right, so what is the difference here? An 11-inch gun, we're probably going to be in close range. Um, 11-inch gun can penetrate up to 12 inches of armor at 1,000 meters. I have a hunch that we're going to want... I can't even fit a 10-inch gun on the front of this ship? I don't understand that. Why not? Armored cruisers definitely had 10 and 11 inch guns historically. It doesn't look like any turrets are allowed to be on the front of this dot. This, no, nothing bigger than 8 inches is going to fit on the front of this design. I can't move the island area back, unfortunately. What the fuck? Huh, I could put it there. That's so stupid. Can the 8-inch guns even penetrate a battleship's armor? That's concerning. How close am I going to have to get? Wait a minute. I swear I had bigger guns last night when I was tinkering around with this. 
I did. I mean, I can fit an 11-inch gun on the back. So that'll be nice. But what am I supposed to do on the front? Five-inch guns on the front? Like, that doesn't make any sense. What if I make the cruiser a little bit bigger? I think I've got cost. I've got a little bit of money to spare. If we make it 8,500 tons, can we fit it? It doesn't seem like the front of the ship gets any bigger regardless of tonnage. That's the weird thing with the design. Like, the ship does get longer, but it's just the, the armored spot in here that gets longer. If I make it... That doesn't change anything. The bulkheads change anything? No. The speed doesn't change anything. Let's drop it to 19.5. Displacement. If anything, it makes like the front look stubbier. Ah. I don't think it's the front tower either. Yeah, I, I, I am, I'm absolutely flabbergasted by this. Is there any way? No. It's be I think it's because I have the more advanced main gun technology. I think that's the issue. I think the more advanced 11-inch guns have a longer rear part to their turret. I, th I really think that's what it is. <sighs> um, I don't know how I feel about a mixed battery of main guns on this thing like uh, an 11 inch on the back and an eight inch on the front. But I think I'm gonna go that route just because I'm going up against an enemy battleship. I'm a little bit nervous about my ability to actually penetrate its armor. So we're gonna do this weird thing that's probably gonna give me all sorts of penalties and everything like that. But uh, we'll, we'll give it a go. All right, the front, uh, rear tower, tower's already there. I'm going to do the single towers here. All right, let's do the extra large. Mm, I don't know. Is the double better? I feel like the double might actually be more cost effective. All right. Uh, meanwhile, for secondary guns here, five inchers, do they fit anywhere on here? I feel like they do. Yes. So we can get five inchers up front here. They will fit there. I don't think they fit anywhere else. Um, so we do get a single five inch uh, battery here in the front, one on each side with just gun shields. Casemates, I think we can fit four inch guns up front here. So we can get four four-inch guns. We get two five-inch guns. There's no real point in having a bunch of extra weight dedicated to um, casemate guns so or additional casemate guns. So the only ones that fit along the broad side of this thing are the two-inchers. And you can put them in, like, in here, but I don't think they actually are going to accomplish anything at all. I don't even think they increase the likelihood of uh, creating fires or anything like that. Um, so, a p potential, I don't have a bar, bar bet. I can't, I can't do this. There's no, I have no option to do that for the, for the turrets. So I can't use the bar bets. Uh, torpedo launchers. I wouldn't mind some torpedo launchers. Those will probably actually come in handy. So let's put in four torpedo launchers underneath the ship. Because that might, that's actually an area where we might be able to have an advantage here and I know we're way overweight here so we're gonna have to kind of think about things a little bit in a minute um, in terms of heavy shells we'll go with heavy in terms of ammo we'll actually go standard there's only one target save us a little bit of weight black powder standard ammo um, standard propulsion torpedo size 15 inch enhanced reloading we'll go with to speed the reloading traits I'm probably going to have to make some changes here. 
Um, let's make it 8,500 tons. That makes it too expensive. We could probably drop the speed a little bit. Maybe reduce the bulkhead slightly. I'm still way overweight. Um, I mean, we could change the rear one to a to an eight inch. I just like the idea of an eleven inch shell, but maybe it's not really an armored cruiser at that point, right? Okay, so we'll go with four eight inchers then. And then in terms of armor. I don't really know if deck armor is all that important because we're going to be at close range, but I think conning tower armor is going to be important because we're going to be going against large enemy turrets. So six inches of conning tower, that might not even be enough. 2.5 of turrets, probably not enough either. The deck armor, honestly, I think the deck armor is less important because I really don't think there's going to be much in the way of plunging fire. Okay. 3.5 on the turret top. We need to do something to save a little bit of money here. Because I want two cruisers, not one. Uh, so all standard bulkheads. Does the barbat even make a difference? Honestly, I don't even know if it does. What if we reduce the weight to 84? It's a little bit overweight. Probably take off some of the four inch guns. I don't think they're gonna do much. That saves some weight, but it doesn't save a ton on cost. I need to drop the cost by 1%. Obviously, the easy way to do that is probably speed. Okay. So, 18 knots feels slow for a armored cruiser. Um, it probably is. But I think I need more bulkheads to protect against the enemy shells. I would like the torpedoes. I mean, I guess I could... Reduce the number of them. Oh, I just got rid of all of them? I'm confused. I'm confused. Do I have any torpedoes here? This is not a very... So we'll do this, we'll switch back to here, and then we'll take a look at this. All right. Oh, this is, this is a double, so every one of these we have, we, we're adding two. Holy crap, torpedoes are expensive. Well, if we only do two on each side and we do four, can we bump the speed up a tad? Uh, probably do 19.5. Okay, so we can do 19 knots, 19 and a half knots with two. The final torpedo would put us back over weight. Cut it to 19 knots. All right, we'll do 19 knots speed, which should be faster than any pre-dreadnought battleship. Um, so this should be the final version of our ship here. So we're going to have six funnels, three doubles. We're going to have two, uh, four 8-inch guns, two 5-inch guns, two 4-inch guns, and six underwater torpedo tubes. Our armor belt is going to be 5 inches, uh, which isn't super great. Conning tower, 6 inches. Turrets, 3.5. Uh, we don't have much in deck armor, uh, but I think it's probably okay. Um, maybe we reduce... How much weight would I have to save to get us up to 19.5? 200 more tons. What if I drop the belt extended to one? Turret top. Conning tower. I really think the extra speed might actually be worth it. 
But geez, this stuff doesn't weigh a lot. I just don't know if the deck armor matters that much. I think the belt extended matters a lot more. How are we not saving any weight? All right, I guess 20 knots is out of the question. 20 knots would be fast for a protected cruiser. I know we don't think of it that way in, in sort of this era, but it, it really would be. I'll add a little bit more weight to the belt. This thing's going to be a paper-thin cruiser here. The hull itself is heavy as sin. Yeah, probably. All right, so what do we end up having? We end up having six underwater torpedo tubes. The, the main problem here is I have to rotate, right? Because there's one on each broadside. So if I fire the three on one side, then I've got to turn around to get the other three. I actually have never used a ship with torpedoes before either. So we'll see what this, how this plays out. Um, you can see here it is a uh, Galatia class heavy cruiser, 359 feet long. Uh, and seven inches, 56 feet wide and seven inches, 31 uh, foot draft with one inch, displacement of 8,487 tons with a full load of 8,500, main battery of two double eight inch guns, belt protection of 5.3 inches, um, propulsion, I can't even, I can't even do this. Um, it won't let me scroll out. Um, horsepower is 15,205. Uh, design speed 19.5 knots. Thank you guys for the follows, by the way. The Killer, CT Mike, Burgotronic. Appreciate all the follows there. Um, in terms of stats, I don't, I'm trying to see if we have any penalties. Engine efficiency is 100. Uh, this hull is not very stable. Ugh. The base is 25. Negative 31 base accuracy plus 50 accuracy penalty. For, well, that's based on sea waves. Cruising speed, accuracy penalty. The higher the stability, the more. Jesus, this is not a very good gun platform by the look of it. Base accuracy is negative 1%. What? This is... What is wrong with my ship? Maybe if I slow it down a little bit. How do we get the stability up? What is wrong with this ship that it's not stable? A Mikasa with no secondary? Like, what's wrong with my ship, guys? Why? It doesn't, changing the bulkheads doesn't change the stability at all. It's the fact that it's short range. Does that have any impact? No, that doesn't change anything. Um, I'm not really sure. I mean, it could be the armor. That just changes the resistance. That doesn't seem to change the actual. Changing shells from heavy to standard, does that change it? No, it just changes weight. I'm really not sure unless it's the turret locations. The aft weight is only offset by 3.7%. I mean, we could probably move these funnels up a little bit. I don't know if that would change anything. Doesn't really seem to change stability at all. Is, is these... Is it these secondaries up here? Are they an issue? No, even even removing the five inch secondaries doesn't doesn't change anything. I 
Maybe it's just the fact that it's the this era of protected cruiser. I don't know. I guess I guess we'll find out. <laughs> We're gonna jump in here and see how things go. A single barrel turret, not with the heavier guns, no. I mean, you can do single barrel turrets. All right, so we're fighting, whoa, incoming shells. That was immediate. All right, so we are instantly already within 1.3 kilometers of the enemy. We're cruising, or we should be cruising at flank speed. We're working our way up here. Now, this is the first battle I fought with two ships on my side here. You can see we've got the Galatia and we've got the Devonshire. Whoa. Main enemy batteries fired and shot. Oh, God. I'm trying to get ahead of him. If we can speed out ahead of him and cut in front of him so that he can only face... Um, he can only bring one gun to bear and we can cross his T, that would be great. Looks like we've actually already started him on fire, which is great. Our secondaries appear to be doing something. Looks like 6-inch hits the heavy cruiser, so he's firing 6-inch secondaries. We started a fire... I don't even know how. Had to be our 5-inch secondaries, I would guess. But you can see this enemy ship... It, wow, okay, so this is good for us. The, this enemy battleship only has 9-inch guns. I played this last night, and they were 13-inch guns. So that's a small mercy. I guess the only problem there is that they fire more rapidly. But they also won't as easily shred our armor. So, avoiding the two-inch secondaries along the casemates probably makes us a little bit... There's the five-incher going there. So, we've got five-inchers and four-inchers. We also have torpedoes, which I don't know exactly how we... Open fire with all torpedoes at any range. Oh, we already have torpedoes in the water. So, the AI already launched those torpedoes out away toward the enemy. We'll see if he heals away. Got a partial penetration here. I'm not even... By the way, so when you have one... Uh, when you have a formation selected like this and you issue orders to the lead ship, the rear ship will follow. So both of these units are kind of going to operate together. Meanwhile, it looks like we've got a torpedo in inbound. It's about to hit. There we go. 167 damage by a lone torpedo hit. This other one up here might hit as well, although it looks like it's going to be... Oh, yep, we got two! A pre-dreadnought with two torpedoes in it is probably going to sink. This might end up being a lot easier of a fight than I thought. We're going to turn in a little bit. Wow. Devonshire, your, uh, your, your main gun missed by a lot. We should do a, a tight formation. So you've got... Uh, by the way, so there's all these different options over here. We can give AI control, which makes more sense when you have a squadron, multiple squadrons that you're commanding. Um, there is a step, there is an option to have line ahead, abreast formation. You can have tight or loose formations. If we have a loose formation, they're less likely to hit, be hit by shells, but you get an accuracy penalty. Tight formation will bring the ships in closer, just automatically. We can choose shell type between HE and AP. Right now, we're just setting it to auto. We're gonna switch fire over to aggressive. We've also set torpedo mode to aggressive. And we can actually just manually attach or detach ships from formation. So right now, we're commanding both ships from the lead, uh, like this right now. Uh, but if we wanted to detach and kind of, we could, for example, we could click on Devonshire, we could go ahead and detach it from the formation. And then we could have Devonshire uh, swing in on the other side of the enemy ship and try and catch him between two ships. I think he's gonna sink. I mean, with the two torpedoes already in, um, he's probably a goner. His float's already under 30%. You can see all of these compartments on the lower part are flooded. Engine number two is damaged. The enemy ship is still flooding. Actually, he might have stopped firing altogether. Certainly seems like the majority of his guns have stopped firing. At least effectively. They're not firing as rapidly as they were. A couple of nice hits there with the 8-inch shells at close range. Penetrated, causing flooding. He's actually pumping out some stuff now. So he was at 30% float. Now he's back up over 40, so he must have some pumps working here. Meanwhile, the Devonshire, we're going to try and swing into the right. This ship is not issuing, listening to my orders. I'm telling him to cut right, and he won't turn that way. 
Instead, he's coming in real close. I don't... I, maybe he can't turn in that direction. He's got to take a wide berth. Damage an enemy casemate. He's going to have a bad torpedo target, but at that range... Aggression. All right, he's got three torpedoes incoming. We'll see. It looks like it, one of them might hit. He's turning into it, it looks like. Although maybe he's going to thread the needle and miss. It's hard to tell. This torpedo's coming in real close. Nice. Hit on the right side there. That was an odd angle to hit your torpedo with. Meanwhile, it looks like Galatia fired three more fish. Maybe that's what the enemy's maneuvering to avoid. He might get one on the rear there. Nice. Another torpedo. So the enemy's been hit by four torpedoes now. Structures below 60. Flotations below 50. Flotations all the way down to 36. So they pumped out two of these compartments here. But now they're flooding in the front and in the rear. We hit the rudder, which I would think might impact his ability to steer, too. Looks like the enemy actually fired some torpedoes. So we're going to try and turn to avoid one. The enemy battleships in this era, remember, they also have torpedoes. Alright, so it looks like we avoided the enemy torpedoes. Meanwhile, the uh, adversary battleship is below 20% on flotation. Heavily listing. Nice little broadside there by the Devonshire. Galatia, I was trying to, you know, do an about face so we could get the other side, the torpedo tubes on the other side into action. Commando Solo, thank you very much for the follow. Archman 5, also thank you for the follow. All right, so we've got the Devonshire in close. Devonshire's not suffered much. The Galatia suffered a few hits. The enemy's main guns have been horribly inaccurate, and I think we're benefiting by the fact that this AI design is just not super powerful. If it had bigger guns, they can shred your armored cruisers pretty easily. All right, you turn tight here, partial pen. They're still maintaining their float damage, which is pretty impressive. Again, four torpedoes and a pre-dreadnought is, is a death sentence, but it is what it is. The only bad thing here is if Galatia fires its torpedoes, if friendly fire is turned on, the Devonshire may intercept those torpedoes. It does look like we can fire our own cruiser's ammo through the other cruiser, though. Whoa, that was a ricochet that almost looked like it bounced all the way back to our own cruiser. Hell yeah, battling. Go Badgers. I think the game takes control to avoid rams. I think they just collide. They don't... Actually, Galicia, let's have you about face. I'm going to have you wheel back. Do we have more torpedoes in the water yet? No. Alright, we're going to have Devonshire ride in here behind the enemy and, and rake his stern. And then we're going to have Galatia move over this way and come back in front. Let's go ahead and speed things up a little bit. Still can't believe he hasn't sunk yet. I think the real advantage for the enemy might be in its secondary batteries. Looks like we've got more torpedoes in the water. Those should hit. One of these will hit. Boom! Another torpedo! Ridley, also thank you for the follow. Alright, so this guy's got to sink, right? He's going to sink. Fire's raging all over the ship. Five torpedoes in him. In an era where torpedo defenses were negligible. A sixth torpedo into the Montezumbo. Basically dead in the water. Floats... Uh, yeah. Okay, he's a goner. He's a goner. Just need another minute. He's float 1%. There he is, 0%. Monzambo sinks due to heavy flooding. That's the first enemy ship I have sunk with flooding. It's also the first time I've used torpedoes. God bless him. So gun basics number two, that was pretty easy. That was a lot easier than I thought. I, I tried last night. Again, I think a big part of it was the fact that the enemy ships were not using 13-inch guns. 
Um, Because if they do use 13-inch guns, you can die pretty damn fast in this game. But uh, hell yeah! Victory! All right, everybody, and that's going to do it for this episode of Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, in which we designed our first armored cruiser and took on an enemy battleship and won, in large part due to, I think, the enemy battleship's design was probably subpar. We were basically overpowered heavy cruisers, uh, while well, actually our, our cruiser design was about normal for an armored cruiser, but the enemy design... Uh, felt almost like a weak battleship. It, I guess it would have been comparable to going against the the German battleships, uh, the pre-Dreadnought battleships with the 9.4-inch guns uh, that uh, were somewhat problematic. They were very well armored, but uh, but when you hit them with, like, five torpedoes, all that armor doesn't really matter much. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed yet another episode of Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.